Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and another Orly Color Pass unboxing and review. I also have some dupes for you later on in the video, so if you're interested, stick around for that. This Color Pass is the third in my yearly subscription cycle. So between this one and the next one, I have some time to decide do I want to continue getting this service or not. And for those of you who don't know about Orly Color Pass, let me give you the quick rundown. So Color Pass is a quarterly subscription box, but you don't actually have to subscribe to get the box. However, it does make a difference in the price. So if you do decide to go all in and subscribe to the full year, it's $119 for the whole year. Or if you want to just buy the boxes box by box, one each quarter, they cost $36 a piece. Now, if you do end up doing the yearly subscription, which is what I do, you end up saving $25 off of retail if you had bought the boxes individually. Now, there are pros and cons to this. Basically, the pros are you can see people's reviews before buying if you do the individual boxes, but the cons are, you know, you're not saving as much money. So I like to just do the full subscription. It's, you know, I do reviews and I like to collect these, so it's not a big deal. The other nice thing about the yearly subscription is if you math it all out, you will save $109 off of all of the polishes versus their MSRP if you do the yearly subscription. So you're basically getting like a steal of a deal on Orly's from Orly Direct. And in every single box, they do send little extras. Sometimes it's polish, sometimes it's trinkets, sometimes it's tools, sometimes it's like treatments, things like that. So you get little bits of extra stuff on top of the six polish bottles already. So you get quite a lot for your money and it's like a fun thing to look forward to each quarter. So with all that said, let's get into the unboxing of the Summer Orly Color Pass and then we will get into kind of my thoughts and then I will show you some dupes at the end and I will timestamp everything down below so that if you guys don't want to listen to me drone on, you can skip to exactly where you want to be. But I know you guys love my angelic voice, so... So as per usual, we have a very well packed box here. Nothing was moving around. They really load this up with stuffing so nothing breaks. Here is the card. It says that this is the pop collection for summer 2022. And on the back, we have all of the colors, a little blurb, a nail art tutorial, and a list of all the bonus items and the MSRP for those. So one of the bonus items is this topper here. It is called Don't Be Square, and it is a triangular yellow topper. And it also came with this double-ended dotting tool. This one, I believe it said it retails for $10, which is kind of high for a dotting tool. But this is a very fine pointed dotting tool. I don't have one this fine in my collection of dotting tools, so I was happy to have it. And then, of course, the piece de resistance, the Orly Pop collection, the six-piece lacquer collection here. And we have four creams, a slightly metallic shimmer, and a topper there on the far left. So first we have Claim to Fame. I'm going to show all of these in two coats. And at the end, I will show a swatch with the color with both of the toppers over separate nails so you can see how that looks. So here we go on the first coat, which I hesitated here. You can see this yellow I found was probably the thinnest of the bunch as far as opacity goes. It didn't feel runny. None of these felt especially runny like some in the past, but you definitely need that second coat to build up. And if you aren't careful, you might need a third with this one, but only this one. I found that I was able to get it to balance out in two pretty well. And then here you can see with just the plain manicure and then with the toppers. Then we have a red or kind of a pinky red and this is called Connect the Dots. Now I, you know me, I don't love reds, but I was surprised I did like this color quite a bit, especially with the yellow and blue in this collection. And you can see I put a little bit too much so I went to wipe off the brush and then there was just enough on the nail to do that first coat. None of these I found were especially opaque, like fully opaque, that one coat opacity on the first coat. All of these are going to need two for sure. But with that second coat, it covers up the visible nail line and it looks bright and glossy. And I, I really did enjoy this kind of 
pinky red it was easy to remove too that's probably why I liked it but I really like this one with the gold topper here's my favorite of the bunch this is called crash the party and it is just a bright kind of in your face super poppy purple and that's just kind of my jam you know me I love purple polish and so here we go on that first coat I really love this brush by Orly I feel like it's perfect to fit right in the crook of my cuticle line. It makes it very easy to do a uh, manicure that doesn't require a lot of cleanup. This one dried down a little more matte and I found that purples of this kind of tone typically do, but nothing a little glossy top coat can't fix. And I like this one with the yellow topper. I feel like it stands out. This is rinse and repeat and I, I have a lot of blues in this tone. I, I mean, one more is not gonna hurt me, but I feel like this is a very common blue tone to have, especially for summer. It's very reminiscent of like water or like clear skies, you know, and so it's like a perfect summery color. And this one, again, you're gonna need two coats, but none of these are streaky. They all dry down very level. So I, you can see me trying to fix because I did make a little bit of a mess there. But with that second coat, Full coverage we've got it and you know this is another one that I find looks really good with that yellow topper I think later on I tell you I call it like the cheese topper because it looks like little triangles of cheese and I feel like it, they all look pretty good with that glitter topper then we have my least favorite in the collection this is called don't pop my balloon there's nothing wrong with the polish I just don't like the color it's just a matter of preference however I do sing praises for the formula because this is like a metallic -y shimmer and you guys know with metallics sometimes you can see those brush strokes there in the polish but when this dries down you can't see them at all they completely disappear so I was super careful with my swatch here but when it dries down you can't even see those lines so it was pretty much the ideal metallic -y shimmer formula. And then I did throw the toppers over this. I never would wear them like this, but I just wanted to see what they'd look like. This one is the topper, just an illusion, and I'm gonna swatch it for you over one nail on Connect the Dots, the red shade. And this is just an, kind of an antique gold, meta or not metallic, holographic type scattered topper. It goes on very easily. It's not really gloopy. I like that in the topper. It makes it really easy to apply. And then we have Don't Be Square. This is the bonus item that is exclusive to Orly Color Pass subscribers. It's this really thick base with these huge yellow triangle glitters. And I'm going to swatch this for you over Crash the Party. And you can see it is in a very thick base. It's kind of hard to get those yellow glitters where you want them. So if you like this, you're gonna have to play with it a little bit. So what did you guys think of this box? I feel like every single box, like progressively, it just gets harder and harder to avoid spoilers for this. So if you wanna be surprised, like just stay off the internet around shipping time. People just get them so fast and then they like pump the reviews out and everything's kind of like right there in the thumbnail. And I'm guilty of that too. Like I know, and I'm trying to just show the box, not the actual polishes themselves. So it doesn't completely spoil it, but I don't know at this point, it's out there, everybody knows, so. I don't particularly care too much about spoilers personally, but I just don't wanna ruin anybody else's good time. So if even the box, like just showing this little guy right here is too much for you guys, let me know and I'll just, I don't know, I'll just hold up the pink color pass box, I guess. It doesn't really matter to me. I know thumbnails are supposed to draw you in, but I hate making thumbnails. <laughs> Can you guys tell I do the same thing in every thumbnail? I'm like, hey, here's the polish, like I'm, I, I cannot photograph myself because I just, I'm like, ugh. Anyways, so the theme of this collection is pop. And I'm taking that to be like pop art, I'm pretty sure. Um, I did not read the card, but it looks like pop art. Yeah, it says pop art on the card. So I should have read the card first. It says, introducing pop, Orly's ode to the fun and forward thinking era of pop art. Don't worry, these six shades aren't just rinse and repeats of summer's past. Patently false. Uh, get ready to crash the party with poppy creams, unexpected shimmers, and a hollow topper that will have your posse thinking your life is just an illusion. Man, that was cheesy. Like, who writes this stuff? <laughs> so last quarter they did impressions. It was like impressionist art styles. And this quarter they're doing pop art, which has me hopeful that 
uh, fall and winter are also going to be a different art style theme. That's kind of cool. I like that the year is cohesive so far. Do they usually do that? I can't think of if they do or not, but if they do that this year, I will be like all in about it. I will definitely renew because I really like that concept, you know? I'm a huge like art plebe, you know? I really only know surface level stuff about art. I'm really basic about it, but I like pop art quite a bit. I think it is really fun to look at. It's really eye-catching. A lot of it looks, you know, super comic booky or like cartoony, uh, just really like in your face. And I'm sure most people know, but if you don't, you know, pop art is like Andy Warhol, Roy Lichtenstein, Keith Haring, um, Yayoi Kusama, if you know her, big Japanese pop artist, and Murakami. Like everybody knows even if you don't know the name, everybody has seen a Murakami piece. So you definitely might not know these names, but you will recognize their art. And it's that's the thing about pop art. It is just so recognizable. Everybody sees it and they know exactly what it is, you know? So overall thoughts on this particular box, and then we'll get kind of more into the gritty details. Overall thoughts, I really love, like I said, the theming again, but I really am enjoying the fact that they included two polishes that aren't creams because like I said this is my second year of doing color pass so this is my sixth box total and I have gotten two holiday boxes and those both had finishes that weren't creams but no other box that I got did everything else was a standard six set of creams so they have uh don't pop my balloon this pink one right here which is like kind of a metallic shimmer and then they included a topper in the collection as well. And this is like a gold, I think they've got hollow in here, like scattered glitter topper. So very cool that they actually like broke free of that six cream formula. I like to see that. As for the colors themselves, let me say, okay. So it says, you know, these six shades aren't rinse and repeats of summer's past, but somebody pointed out they, uh, my friend sent me this reel and I will try to find it again and I will link it down below if I can. But comparing this collection to a OPI collection from I think it was 2018, which was also literally called Pop and was themed. Oh, my jaw popped when I said Pop. That was weird. That's creepy. Um, it was themed, I believe, also around Pop Art. OPI did a textured finish. But the colors, like four of the colors were just like dead on the same. Now the textures are different, but it was just like a little bit weird that it was so dead on. I mean, but I do think that these colors, especially the creams are quite dupable. And that's why I will show you here in a second, my dupes. But let me just say, you know, I love the Orly formula. I don't think the price is bad. I like the like kind of mid-sized brushes they're not like these huge wide paddle brushes it's perfect for my nails and orly bottles are 18 milliliters which as far as i know is like the biggest mainstream bottle size out there and i doubt there's really many indies that are loading up with 18 milliliters they, you get a lot of bang for your buck is what i'm trying to say with an orly polish my favorite color in the collection I mean, you guys aren't going to be surprised. It's the purple. It's called Crash the Party. It's just this really like vibrant, bright pop purple. You know, I really like it. But I did notice that with the these three together, the primary colors, we have um, Rinse and Repeat, Connect the Dots, and Claim to Fame. Um, the bottoms of these, the fonts look different for every single title, which bothers me. But these three together, they look really fun. And I think it would be fun to do like a pop nail art with these. I'm not going to do that. But, you know, I like to say that it's going to be fun. So then let's get into the bonus items really quick before I show you the dupes. So the first bonus item, uh, it was this Orly Dotter tool, which it has a very, very fine point on it there. You can kind of see, like there's not, I feel too big of a difference in the dot sizes on either side. Now, I do think that the, the like pointed dot here 
This will be perfect for dragging and water marbling. Somebody suggested I use something like a little bit pointier, so I think this would be good. I have a lot of dotting tools. They're very easy to come by. I have tons of them, but I don't think that this is a bad item for a box like this. I think that a lot of people who do boxes like this are maybe looking to expand their collection, so they might not have everything in the same way that some of us do, you know, because we've been spending too much on <laughs> nail accessories for our entire lives. But I think this is a great thing to include. The only like nitpicky complaint I have is so every time you get one of these boxes, they include this card and on the card, they give you an example of some nail art that you could do. This nail art tutorial is like a double dot like pop kind of a look. Actually, I don't know why I'm trying to explain it to you. I can just show you. So you can kind of see you paint your nail one color and then you lay down one dot and then over the top slightly offset, you lay the same size dot and it's a larger dot. So they don't promise you that they're gonna include stuff to do the nail art that they show you, but if you're gonna include a dotting tool and show a nail art that uses a dotting tool, why wouldn't you use a, like put a dotting tool in that's the right, the right size like what it just doesn't go together it's not cohesive it makes me mad but i actually don't have a dotting tool that is this fine so i guess i'll take it i'm still annoyed though okay and then the other item was another topper for us and i in theory really love this but i also want to scream at it because okay it's called don't be a square and it is a topper that is all just these little yellow triangles. And I don't know, I saw the word square and I was instantly mad because I was like, those are triangles. And then I was like, well, it makes sense because it says, don't be a square. But I still feel like if you're going to name it, don't be a square, you should have made a square topper. I don't know. It's just weird. Like it just, the name is weird for me. But I love that it looks like little cheeses, you know? It reminds me of, if you ever played Mousetrap or if you were like me and didn't know how to play Mousetrap as a kid, so you just played with the pieces of the game Mousetrap, you'll know that there was these little like cardboard triangle cheese pieces that were in the game and I loved those. And, and so now I have a little triangle cheese topper, but this is hard to use. I always hold toppers like this Upside, well, I'm not like sitting there like this for 15 minutes. I, I put it somewhere upside down for like 15 minutes before I'm going to use it. And that gives it an opportunity for the glitters to kind of sink down a little bit because with these bigger toppers, they're heavier. So they sink to the bottom of the base. But the suspension base is so thick that it's really hard to, unless you're like, so what I have to do is kind of do this to get enough on the brush to really make a difference, but then you still kind of have to finagle them around just a little bit on the nail. And actually what I do is I'll kind of like brush them out a little bit on the nail and then I will use an orange wood stick to kind of carefully guide them and push them around the nail in the way I want them to lay if I'm doing like an actual manicure. But for my swatch photos, I just kind of put them on there and showed you they laid where they laid. I'm like, okay, that's what it looks like against this color because it takes a lot of time. but it is a fun topper and one thing about this topper in particular, according to this card, it is a color pass exclusive. So you will not be able to buy this from the Orly website, at least if they hold true to this guy, you can only get this in the summer color pass. Okay, and then the last thing I wanted to show you guys was my little dupe wheel that I made here and I will try to lay some footage over so you guys can see a little bit closer what I'm talking about. So what I did was I took every color and in the center of the trio here, the middle one is the new Orly Summer color. And then on the right and left of the polish is two colors from my collection that I felt closely matched it. And I just feel like there's a lot that are so close that like from here on the camera, I bet you can barely tell there's really much of a difference for most of these. Um, so let's go color by color, break it down, the ones that I found. So first we have Orly Claim to Fame, the yellow in the collection. Now it's kind of got that like butterscotchy vibrantness to it. So I immediately thought, well, what about Hollow Taco's Butterscotch Hop? So you'll see on the left hand side, that is what is there. It's a little bit darker than the Orly, a little bit richer, but 
it's pretty close. And then on the right hand side, you have Smith and Colt's Color Me Curious. And it's like in real life, like just a hair lighter, but from a distance, I could not tell the difference. However, out of the three of these polishes, I think the Orly is the cheapest. So if you don't have this color and you want it, buy the Orly. If you have either of these, you don't need the Orly. Next is the pinky red, connect the dots in the center there. And on the left, we have another Holo Taco polish. This is the Floor is Guava. This came out last summer, and I feel like it is very similar, if not exactly the same. And then on the right-hand side is Zoya's Desi. So I'm sure a lot of us have pretty big Zoya collections. You probably have this one at least, or, or the Holo Taco. Those are both pretty common polishes to have. Um, and if you don't, Zoya has really crazy sales all the time, but personally, I just prefer the Orly formula. Um, for me, that's just like an easy one to work with because with Zoya, as much as I don't really care um, about brush size, they do come with the skinny brushes as a standard. And so you would have to pay $2 extra for a Z-Wide brush if you're into that, which I think a lot of people prefer the Z-Wides. And it's just kind of wasteful at that point. So you might as well just get the Orly. The blue, which is rinse and repeat. This one I had a lot that were in this kind of color family and then were just like slightly darker or slightly lighter. But the two that I found that were closest, I have uh, China Glaze Sunday Fun Day. And that is what is on the left there. It is just a little bit lighter. It's got just a tinge of something in there. But then on the right hand side is Zoya, or not Zoya, Sally Hansen's Cerulean. This is an Insta Dry polish, and I feel like it's pretty darn close. Out of the three of these, though, Orly definitely has the best formula because the Sally Hansen Insta Dries, as much as I love them, I find they chip pretty quick and they do look a little bit ridgy on my nails, pretty thin. They show texture. And as much as I love the Crayola ones, I got to say that, right? And then as far as the China Glaze one goes, I don't know if it's just because I think this bottle's a little bit older, but it is a little bit streaky with the pigment, like the pigment is settling no matter how much I sit here and shake it up. And it's just a thinner formula. So the Orly works really well. But like I said, I feel like this is a heavily dupable color. So if you've got a lot of blues, you probably have it. Okay, so for the purple... Something kind of funny happened and I duped it out with Orly. So the purple is called Crash the Party and I love this tone of purple. I have quite a lot of purples in this tone of purple, but the two closest that I had were also Orly's. So the first one, the one on the left is the Orly by Lisa Frank collection, Make a Splash. And then the one on the right is from their summer collection last year. Uh, these aren't repeated though, guys. It's from their summer collection last year, but these aren't repeated. And this one is called Synthetic Symphony. So uh, granted, this is darker than the, the one that came out this year, but not by much. Like it's not, I'm gonna hold this here. Yeah, okay, it's darker on camera too, whatever. But it's so similar. Like, I don't know. Like, don't tell me that's not a repeat. And then, show me that oh wow they look really different on camera in real life i swear they don't look that different well now i'm just being mean for no reason thanks then we have the two more unusual finishes these are the ones that are a little bit harder to dupe out but i don't think i did too bad of a job so we have the metallic -y pink don't pop my balloon and in the center there you can see it it's much lighter than the two that i picked but I don't have a lot of colors in this tone because it's just, I don't like that weird kind of pinky purpley color. Is it fuchsia? Is that what you'd call that? So the first one I have is Naughty and Nice by Studio M. Um, I bet you nobody actually has this but me. Like this is old and it's something you can really only get in Michigan. <laughs> but it's made by the same makers as Color Club. It's like, for, is it Forsyth Cosmetics or something like that? So Color Club might actually have something similar because Studio M and Color Club do have a lot of like the exact same polishes. So somebody might be able to tell us a Color Club that matches this. 
And then we also have another Orly. And on the right there, that is Orly's Awestruck. And obviously you can see it is quite a bit darker, but it is similar in like color family and type of finish. So I just wanted to include it. You know, sometimes duping out is not an exact science. Um, I definitely think that, uh, who is it? Like Hannah Louise Poston, who is a makeup YouTuber and and Lauren May Beauty, they always say like, oh, I want to dupe the vibes of, of something. So that's kind of what I was doing. I'm like duping the vibes of this polish. So it's, it's close, but it's not like an exact, you know? And then of course the topper here, just an illusion. I don't have anything exactly like it. So you can see in the center, I did two coats because when I put toppers on swatches, I always do a two coater. Um, when I wear it on my nails, I usually only do one, but just so that you can kind of see um, in the middle there, it's got a lot of kind of a more antique looking gold to it. And on the left, we have a decrepit China glaze, like the bottle, the, the label's coming off and this is golden enchantment. So I don't know if you can get this anymore, but I just wanted to show you if you have a scattered gold hollow topper, you could do something quite similar with it. Like I said, this is not the same type of gold. This is a much warmer gold but it's a similar concept. And then if you wanted this polish a little bit more full coverage, I do have Zoya uh, Godiva, and this is one of their pixie dust. So it's quite textured, but it has that, like almost to me, the exact same look of this particular topper if you built it up to opacity or if you could build it up to opacity. So I just wanted to include that in there as kind of like a different type of option, you know, and um, those are my dupes. So that is going to be my review on the Orly Pop collection for the Summer Color Pass. You guys saw I have dupes of all of them pretty much. I mean, you know, there's a couple that look a little bit unique compared to what I have, but not by so much that it really matters. So I probably would not have purchased this if I was buying like a one-off or something like that. Like if I was buying each box seasonally, this one I probably could have skipped, but I am not like mad about it because part of the reason I like to get this box is because I like to review it for you guys. Um, I saved so much overall on the subscription that getting a box where I have like copies of stuff is not a big deal. And also I just collect this stuff. Like I just, I've got, you know, you guys know the drill, but if you have a large polish collection, definitely look in your collection first before you pick this up because they're very easily dupable. However, I actually do love this box for two reasons, which I already talked about, but I'm gonna say them again. Number one, they finally included finishes that weren't creams in a non-seasonal box. Like, I don't know if they used to do that or if this is brand new, but it's new to me in the two, almost two years that I've subscribed. And number two, I love that they are keeping with this art theme. And I'm kind of wondering like, if they do maintain this art theme, I hope, I hope they do. What are they gonna do for fall and winter? I don't know enough about art to know enough art styles to be like, oh, I think that they're gonna do like this for fall or this for winter. But I think it'll be really cool to see their take on it if they keep up with that theme. And yeah, I, I'm glad that they stepped out of the box a little bit with this one, even if it was kind of an exact copy of the OPI Pop collection. Anyways, before um, Orly f like comes and finds me, I should probably go. So yeah, let me know what you guys thought of this collection. Did you guys find it especially dupable in your own collections as well? You know, the thing about that is a lot of us, we all have a variety of sizes of collections. So what's easily dupable for some might be impossible for others because we just all have different tastes and you know some people don't have 1500 nail polishes sitting behind them so not as easy to do <laughs> but yeah that's gonna be it from me like I said let me know in the comments what you guys thought also let me know if you guys can think of a cool art style they should do for fall winter I, like drop that there too so that I can look it up and learn about art so anyways I will see you guys in the next one bye